So in this video we're going to focus more on the west end of the railroad. Uh, we're going to run the boundary freight east, train number 82. On the timetable we run it comes into Cascade, which is the area that we're showing right now, at around 9, 9 o'clock, 9.30 in the morning. Cascade is the westernmost model section of the, the line. The train runs out of staging. The staging track represents Grand Forks, Midway, the, the uh, mills there, as well as the, the small stub of the Carmi subdivision of Kettle Valley that remained. Uh, I'm not going to do any switching on the route, I'm just going to run at a track speed so you can see some of the scenery. The scenery is obviously a work in progress, the buildings are all mock-ups, the uh, telegraph poles still need to be worked for the right number of insulators, but it'll give you an idea of, uh, of what's happening, and obviously the blasting and road work needs to be done. So at Cascade, you've got... Um, uh, I've taken modeler's license to include the Carson subdivision, um, sorry, of the Carson Spur, which is a section of the Burlington Northern Great Northern that used to run up from Republic. Uh, I have a job uh, that runs out of hidden staging here at Burlington Northern Staging and uh, switches some of the industries and the, and the interchange and returns. Um, and there's a, an ore reload and a potato warehouse. What you're seeing now is the train crossing the uh, Kettle Valley, uh, sorry, the Kettle River on a very large trestle that's uh, going to be modeled full size, both in height and length, and uh, going on to one of the filled ends, which was originally a very long wooden trestle, so all covered in fill. Uh, the time frame is October, so there's fall foliage um, at the base of the, the fill, deciduous trees, that still needs to be added on. Um, I've been experimenting with the Notch Grassmaster um, static grasses and having some uh, reasonable satisfaction with the results there, so it's all grassed in this area. This is a more arid area of the railway than the rest of the railway, so it's more of the Okanagan Plateau, so there's more ponderosa pines, um, some scrub brush, uh, as well as uh, the trees being further apart, so it's a less dense area. As we move more into the, the Monashies, uh, the trees become much more dense, so it becomes much more like the west coast um, mountain area, mountain terrain. Here the train is passing a mock-up of the consolidated mining limestone tipple and also a maintenance of way spur is used to refill gravel and fill. Uh, this is the Fife and Lafferty siding which is not used for meats, it's really just used for staging facing point cars that are dropped uh, by the westbound and then worked by the eastbound. There's also uh, a lumber reload which the locomotive passed a minute or so ago. Uh, that was lumber from a, a mill at Christina Lake that was trucked up to a reload. Um, and that was an overpass of the old Fife Highway. So the train is passing um, the water tank at Fife. And uh, this was made famous by the, the, the artwork of um, John uh, Senor and the cover of the JF Garden book, which you would have seen in, in the back background as the train passed. Um, passing through a truss bridge over a slide area. The area was very, very unstable. Uh, so it actually didn't cross a creek as far as I'm aware. It was actually just a slide path, which is why a truss bridge is opposed to a through girder or something like that. Um, and uh, then going through a snow shed. So my son's being very creative in terms of the camera angles here. And it'll go make its way up McCray. Creek Canyon through some tunnels of Paulson, another snow shed, and then finally to the summit of Farron. The grade here is about 2.4% descending. Uh, it's a heavy train, so normally there would be a thermal test done, a brake test and thermal test done at Farron at the summit, and then another thermal test done at Corkendall and Shields before making its way home. So it's a nice way to add a little bit of time to the, the mainline run. It's a very short tunnel, 100 or 200 scale feet long, um, just like the prototype, swinging around into McCray Creek, and then uh, what will be a famous snow shed that's just below the Paulson Bridge on Highway 3. That's a photograph of it that the locomotive is going over now. The snow shed was still in existence in 1970, although I think it was demolished shortly thereafter and replaced by um, slide fences and uh, some electric trips. So entering the 
westmost switch of Farron. This is all going to be a snow scene and uh, at this point um, the the consist is passing uh, the sort of headwaters of McCray Creek which will be a beaver dam uh, and all iced in. Just mocking that up now with some snow covered trees. So the train is passing a lumber log reload, a, a um, tree reload that uh, was at Paulson. I've moved it to Farron and it's moving behind. So it's on the main. It's at eastbound, so it has priority, but it's passing a work train. One of the jobs we also run is a work train that runs out of Cascade, switches the maintenance way, uh, tracks along the way across the summit, goes all the way down to Shields, turns and goes back. Um, makes for a reasonably interesting job because uh, with the spreader, it needs to be turned at the Ys at Cascade and Farron and reorganized to make sure it's in the right direction. So there's enough to keep someone busy for a couple hours. So this, in steam days, Farron was the site of the helper station. So this, the helpers were actually stationed at the summit and dispatched down to the foot on both the east and west side to help trains come up. Trains now crossing Porcupine Creek, which is a filled trussel, a very large culvert, and entering the west portal of Bulldog Tunnel, approximately one kilometer or 0.6 mile long tunnel uh, through the back of the Monashi Mountains. It's now exiting the east portal and uh, it's going to start falling at 2.4% down Huck Creek, um, which will eventually flow into the lower Arrow Lake at Corkendall. So in this very tightly constrained area, um, the train is, is following the creek and this is going to be one of the next sections that I model right now. It's just roughed in as you can see. The consist is a, an H liner followed by an Alpo B unit uh, and a couple of FP7s, a B unit and an A unit. Um, they're all from different manufacturers. They all work pretty well together once speed match with the Digitrax system. Uh, and the prototype actually ran consists of co uh, locomotives in, from a variety of manufacturers and a variety of paint schemes in this time frame, so it makes for some nice variety. The train's passing. Train number 81, which is the westbound boundary freight. Um, normally they would be scheduled to meet at Farron, but apparently 81 is running a little late. So it's going to be uh, meeting at Corkendall, which was the uh, common occurrence. At this point, the train has uh, broken away from Pup Creek and is now riding the cliffs above the lower Arrow Lake. Crossing Grass Creek. And about ready to enter the short tunnel just to the east of Corkendall. Crossing the bridge, or what will be the bridge at Bear Creek, through a large cut. Here you can see the uh, telegraph poles are a little bit more uh, as they will be in the finished state uh, with the correct number of insulators and um, uh, weathered a bit, so uh, have quite a bit of work to do to put all the telegraph poles in place. Now crossing Fire Creek, which I've tried to model with um, moss covered trees, so a, a north facing slope, so a very wet creek area. Through another cut. And into tunnel number two.
And that point, we're going to have to wrap it up.